Oh, I hear a real helicopter outside. Can you hear that? October 31st, it's Halloween of 2012, and I shall fly this uh, Apache, uh, miniature Apache helicopter, Sima brand, and <coughs> it's 9.38 p.m. And it's kind of dark in here. It's illuminated only by a lava lamp and the Apache's uh, lights. I'm going to spin up here. Uh oh. Now, this doesn't have blinking lights to distract a person, so that's good. Good landing on the table. Ooh. Crap. We'll land on that box and inverting lands. Beakish. Sure you can see that. And go off backwards. Right there on my hand. I'm going to fly toward this lava lamp. place to fly in this apartment. I'm going to the bathroom. Try some skill, take off on the couch cushion. Whoa, punk! There we go. Gonna go over near the computer.
Land here next to the door. Take off in front of the door. Whoa! It's interesting. Now, I'm going to take off on my head. And see about taking off on my on my head. Hopefully this works. I've only done it once. Well, it kind of worked, but uh, try again. All right, there we go. Well, that's not so good. We'll take off on this. And on the table, on the table. So much for that. Try it again. I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna land on there. Well, that's not such a good takeoff, and I'll take off on the very top of the couch. Still, I'll take off on my knee. Good thing these. Good, it's good this thing's lightweight.
Take off one couch cushion. Thanks for my face. I'm going to turn around to take off and land successfully. Finally! Alright. Now we'll attempt to take off. That's the AH-64 Apache. It's actually the SIMA, or SEMA, however some people pronounce it. It's the uh, S-109. Pretty nice one. I like the military style, but then I like, uh, oh, I like Bell helicopters. Uh, similar style. Oh, gosh, I like that, but 222, uh, Bell 222. Uh, Bell, uh, a Bell, 4 uh, Bell 429 or a Bell 430, but especially, oh yeah, if I can find a remote control version of the, uh, of the Bell 525 Relentless, which they just unveiled this year, but probably more realistic, realistically, you can find, uh, well, like, the, the Bell 429 would be what you'd see on the market, <clears throat> which is, uh, oh gosh, just a really nice looking helicopter. And of course, here's my lava lamp, pink, uh, pink liquid with uh, yellow lava. I mean, it's neat looking. I just got this lava lamp a couple days ago on. Was it yesterday? Yeah, on the 30th or whatever. Yeah, October 30th, 2012. First time I ever had a lava lamp, and I'm I'm in my early 30s now, and uh, it's hot. Yeah, and it's got a couple cosmetic blemishes. It's just got these scratches here. See them right there. Um, a dent in the cap, but you know, for two dollars, you can't you can't go wrong with that. And uh, takes up to two hours to heat it up. It's 
Still got the standard 40 watt light bulb in. Oh, damn. Kind of using it as a heater. <laughs> 69 degrees right around here uh, where the lava lamp is. I mean, yeah, it's, it's pretty looking, but, like, I also use it as a heater. <laughs> For, like, well, I mean, it only pulls 40 watts of power and it gets hot. And as the room cools the lava lamp, for the lava lamp to function for these to return down to the main pool down there, uh, it also heats up the room and it's only you know 40 watts versus 600 watts for the, uh, the heater and it doesn't need too much heat in here um, and uh, I mean you know I'm not wearing sweatshirts yet, well I did last night and uh, my TV only pulls up to 140 watts, so um, that doesn't heat the room very well. Well, this, uh, this lava lamp does, and uh, anyway, so I'm going to end this video. It was uh, for the, uh, just playing around with the, um, let's see if you can see. Um, yeah, it's October 31st, 2012. Here's my Halloween decorations. Um, except for that Easter chick. And here's the box to it. I'm borrowing it right now. The, uh, it's, a, it's the uh, Sima brand. It's the uh, S109 uh, AH64 Apache. And, uh, yep pretty cool and one of these days I hope to uh, <laughs> I hope to um, take off and land it on my Nintendo <laughs> it's big enough be a nice helipad uh, be a nice little function for it thought about buying some um, some uh, foam board which is uh, basically oh gosh is it Seven millimeter thick, roughly, but it's um, it's it's like some kind of hard foam that's um, sandwiched in between. Uh, oh, the helicopter it rubbed on this uh, edge here. Um, but it's like uh, the the foam board. It's like seven millimeter hard foam, and it's. Um, it's sandwiched in in between two pieces of uh, poster board. Makes a nice little helipad, and um, yeah, and um, I could use that or the TV box. I can launch a couple helicopters off this TV box because this TV was 46 inch, and uh, so I just wanted to um, show another video of me playing around with uh, with the Apache. And uh, how cool it is! And uh, turn on, turn on again. Which direction does the switch go? I thought that's the way I was doing. And you see the the mo well the motor is kind of weak right now because it uh, I ran the batteries pretty low. But these little three millimeter LEDs still have plenty of power. Now of course they will. And uh, they uh, it doesn't take much uh, much power to uh, run one of those LEDs. Uh, uh, little, just one of these LEDs like this, you're looking at possibly a twentieth of a watt. So you can run within a watt of power. You can run like twenty of these things. And yeah, just rough estimate. They they do vary and all that. Um, See down inside there, there's um, a green LED. Looks like about a one millimeter LED. And then, um, then in my mom's um, S107, you can see what looks like a little flashing LED. Here's the battery there, um, right there for the uh, for this uh, easy access. Oh, look what I see here. Right here in the uh, underneath the nose of this hel of this helicopter, right there. I wonder if that's the uh, infrared receiver. And um, I wonder if that's the uh, 
Yeah, because on my mom's S107, it's on the back. Oh, because hers is more of a sport type of helicopter. And it's kind of located right there on hers. Um, but what I like about this one is, um, apparently, I guess it's all plastic frame. A little lighter weight. Hers seems like it's heavier. And um, I guess they got the weight of the battery up here to balance it. Um, I don't like necessarily that it's got these little wheel things there because um, that can snag on carpet. Uh, be nice fit. Well, skids are nice, but like if they go up and around like a complete loop, so you can take off on any type of carpet really well. And, uh, but the Apache, which this is, is one of my favorite helicopters, well, military helicopters anyway, it's, uh, just a really nice looking design, and the Apache made by Boeing. Now, although I like Bell as a company, and I like the, uh, I think they make some good products, um, <clears throat> Their their attack helicopter, which is the Cobra, is just really kind of ugly. I mean, this canopy here on the Apache looks pretty good, but on the Bell it goes straight across and then it slants down. And it just looks like alien head and it's just like totally ugly. And then it's too narrow in the uh, in the front. I like how this Apache has a wider profile around the base. Um. And of course the engines on the Apache. I think the engines on the Bell look kind of, or on the uh, Cobra look kind of cool. But I really like the Apache um, because I've seen a picture. It looked like from this angle, right? The way I'm showing you right here, it kind of looked like from this, from right about at this angle um, on Wikipedia, and it was. Um, a Apache helicopter owned by Israel and it was over it was sitting right on the top edge of some hills in Greece and it was looking over uh, it was looking over a valley and just it, it it looked like from right looked about like this and about like this and it's just a really good picture and you get to see these exhaust ports on the engine and I think the rotor blades are moving very slow in the, the uh, you know, because it's just basically parked there. And uh, maybe they were getting ready to take off or whatever, but it just looks so iconic and really good. And, uh, of course, the, uh, on here, this is infrared control. And, um, well, the camera the other day picked up really good on it. Yes, and it does. This is interesting because um, I'm looking at this with my naked eye. I can't see it very well, but it shows up really good on the camera. Uh, that's infrared, and um, in order for your eye not to really see it, it has to be the, the wavelength has to be longer than generally generally has to be longer than 800 nanometers. Especially 850. Now, I can see the lights um, with my. I don't know if I look at yeah, with my naked eye, I can see it blinking. It's yeah, I can see it blinking dim. It's it's dim. It's a very dim red, but this camera picks it up really good. You can see it with your naked eye if you pay really close attention, but it shows up really good on this camera for some reason. And, um, see it, uh, this is shining off of the wall because I got it aimed at the wall. Well, now you actually see the front. And, um, these send, I guess, it's telemetry data to the helicopter. And, uh, the helicopter has to be able to see this um, this signal, and um, has to be able to see this signal and uh, the sensor on there. 
you can see it from several angles on here it's from the side oh, that's greatness I just dropped it I'm in a dark room and um, okay now this is from the bottom from the bottom it's from the top um, from the, the left side this is the right side shows up really good on here I'm surprised and then uh, okay I got the throttle down full throttle now I'm going to let go of the throttle really quick okay you heard it snap and then the lights went out um, I guess that's so that um, <clears throat> so that um, the helicopter doesn't come down all of a sudden quickly or whatever but uh, you can see these blinking now. I mean, I can't even I can't even see them in my eye because there's too much light in here. But uh, you can see them really good on this camera. That's infrared. And uh, I don't know. I'll just show you here. Okay, obviously you can see the bottom of this. And then there's the top. And there's the side. All that. Oh yeah. Okay. You'll you'll see me. Okay. Got the throttle. Got the throttle pushed. Now I'm gonna let go. Okay. Watch this. See the throttle. It's going good. I'm gonna let go. Then it it still goes. Basically, I have to have the throttle going in order to um, use this. Let's see if it's going to change. Should be some kind of pulse code on here. Then, um, Well, anyway, that's uh, that's infrared, and um, it's pretty cool. I'm going to set this helicopter to charge, and then I'm going to end this video. All right, we will refuel the helicopter again. Okay, got about a minute left on here. Plug it in. Uh, we're going to plug it in. Okay, that's red like it should be. Now we're going to plug it up to here. We're going to refuel this helicopter and it's going to be beakish. You hear that high frequency sound? Plug it up. And then now the high frequency sound went off. And the light went off on the charger. Now the light's going to come on about 10.46 p.m. High frequency sound was the charger.